Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about an event that happened in 1994 and also in 1995, which is very, um, well, it's very difficult to find a lot of information about this event on the internet. In fact, even today, if you Google, go online and you Google Blockbuster Video Game World Championship 1994, 1995, you're really not, it's really surprises me how little information pops up about this event and um, I was born in 1979 and I was 15 when the first event rolled around and uh, I actually participated in this championship and won at the store level the state level I'll call it and then well, it was more like a I don't know if they really called it the state level but it was more like a broader regional level and I mean because some states were so big you didn't really they didn't really break it into states they did it more by region based on where their stores were located and um, and then they had a world championship so there are really three levels of the championship and that happened in Fort Lauderdale Florida and I actually went there with my mother and my my aunt we went there too there was actually a pretty big deal at the time I'll get a little bit more into that later so what I'd like to do in this video is just kind of cobble together everything that I can find on the internet just for documentation sake and then also talk about my own personal experiences everything I can remember honestly it was like it's almost like a dream like it's hard to believe that it even happened and since there's so little documentation video or you know this is before mass internet before mass I mean, you were lucky if you had dial-up at that time, and really, what ruled the day was more like mag, you know, magazines like EGM, GamePro. Uh, I would say, in my view, those the ma magazines at that time were just like unbelievable. They were so huge. I don't know if you re people remember, but EGM was just an unbelievable magazine around 1993, 1994. It was a, I mean, it was like a 400-page monster that. Um, I mean, around Christmas time, there was just so much, I mean, they, they were huge. So, and I, as a, as a teenager, I just remember love going through the, those magazines and just pouring through everything. And things are a lot different now because of the internet and all that has really changed the industry. So let's get through. Uh, so basically what I've done here is I pulled up everything that I could find. Uh, this would be. A pretty typical advertisement that you would see in a magazine I think GamePro even advertised in other magazines as well I think I may have even seen this exact ad in EGM not sure but because I think GamePro was an official sponsor if I remember right I don't clearly remember that um, so pretty interesting so for the there were two sides that was the interesting part of it is that there was a Genesis side and there was also a Nintendo side well Super Nintendo actually and they actually had different games so on the Genesis side I played Genesis so we had the NBA Jam Sonic 3 and Virtual Racing um, and then on the Super Nintendo side the only game that was the same was NBA Jam and for whatever reason they picked two fighting games it looks like they had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Clay Fighter Tournament Edition I can't really speak to how those were actually scored but I can tell you that NBA Jam was pretty much you played a half and uh, well maybe I should get into that later that's more of the personal side of that story I'll kind of break down how that actually worked and explain everything that I can possibly remember remember that's like 23 years ago so it's quite a long time ago um, so first things first let's go look I did find this news article from 1994 on August 22nd which is interesting because I believe the actual tournament happened let's see where was the date there's a date here on one of these you can see the date is August 19th through the 21st so that means that this article was written one day after the event ended and uh, I'll just read through here a little bit 
It says the two winners who emerged on Sunday afternoon had two things in common. They started playing video games before they could read, and they practiced day and night. They say that as though that's unusual. Now I think it's pretty common. <laughs> I know my kids, they were playing video games pretty early. So it says their hard work paid off. Uh, so the winners of that actual tournament, it was not Dr. Disrespect Live. I can assure you that. He is a, a uh, if you Google around, you're going to find that, you know, claims that Dr. Disrespect won back to back 1994 and 1995. Um, I love Dr. Disrespect. He's a funny guy, but that never happened. In fact, he, I don't think he even participated in those tournaments to my knowledge. But who did win was Mark Gwinane on the Super Nintendo side and Fred Dowdy. What's interesting about that to me is one's from Massachusetts and one's from Maryland. Personally, that's interesting to me just because I lived in Massachusetts and now I live in Maryland. So it's just kind of funny to me how that connects together. So Mark Gwinane, at the time he was 14, so he was one year younger than me of Manchester, Massachusetts. And Fred Dowdy, 17 of Baltimore, Maryland, beat out 230 finalists. So that's how many were at actually at Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I heard numbers that as many as 220,000 actually participated in this event at the store level. Not sure about the regional slash state level. And so it's a, it goes on to say from around the world at Blockbuster Video's World Game Championship at Broward County Convention Center. That's interesting to me. That's uh, Broward County where all that voting fraud was going on. So contestants came across, came as far away from Australia and Chile and from as near as Weston in Southwest Broward County. Uh, proceeds from ticket sales were six each at the door for benefits, benefit the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, so it says that the winners each won a free trip for four to San Francisco where they'll be featured in a new video game. I think that was Shaq Fu. I'm not even sure. I can't remember the details there says uh they competed in the super nintendo sega genesis yep that's true both companies make video games no kidding actually this is kind of a genius idea by blockbuster so basically there was a lot of stability in at that time in the industry in terms of the plat what platforms were out and who was you know basically who was playing what and what's interesting to me is that this never really happened again. Like at the time, the video game industry was still something, you know, leper, social lepers played and you, <laughs> it wasn't mass accepted the way that it is today. And just a huge part of the culture. It's really in terms of sales, I believe it's even bigger than the movie industry. I think that happened actually a long time ago. And um, so it's just interesting to me that this uh, this tournament started in 94 and then happened again in 95 but that was it it never happened again well why not well the sega saturn and the playstation came out which kind of screwed everything up now I, i'm assuming blockbuster didn't i don't know if they made money on this tournament or what you know i would love to find out the inside details or the inside baseball what happened there I did it make money? Did it not? I mean, it was smart in a way because it spurred a lot of game rentals because kids were trying to compete in this tournament, right? So they would announce, hey, we're, we're having a tournament. You have to be good at these games. So you're going to have to rent them and maybe rent them multiple times because you're going to want to win, right? So you're probably not going to master it in like one or two rentals. You're going to want to rent it a few times and really master the game and get good and uh so that was kind of like the whole business side of it it would, it would spur rentals and i guess they would work with uh, uh you know basically promotions and stuff like that to make money and yeah i don't know i guess it's just weird that it never came about again it was just playstation came out and that was it it's like we never heard of anything else like that again i thought that was kind of unfortunate i thought it was really cool that blockbuster video was doing that and now blockbuster video i mean they don't even rent movies anymore unfortunately which makes me a little bit sad even though they're <laughs> i mean there was something special about movie night right you go you rent videos or video games take it home and people don't really have that experience anymore that's that's a whole other video about instant gratification but anyway let me get back to the article here so this says, uh, shaking his head in disbelief that he won. Gwinane said he had been hooked on video games since he was five. 
At home, he has 30 games for the Super Nintendo and 50 for the regular Nintendo. And it says, unlike Gwinnang, so Gwinnang, uh, Dowdy's kind of a more of the cocky guy. He says, Dowdy said that he knew he would capture the Sega Genesis title. I just told myself, never give up and play to win. It's good. I like that attitude. Positive outlook. He said, his Miami Heat beat the Charlotte Hornets in overtime in the video basketball game. Dowdy said he had been playing video games since he was four. The ouster of Lance Baird of 13 of Weston disappointed many cheering fans in the audience. I guess he was a hometown favorite. Baird, who goes to Tequesta Trace Middle School, made it to the final eight teams, but got wiped out in a street fight in the Street Fighter 2 video game. He just knew all these tricks, Baird said of his competitors. He just kept jumping over me and hitting me. Sounds like he was doing that cross-up jump, you know, that crossover landing kick. That's what it sounded like. Not Excuse me, not everyone knew how to block that back at the time. Baird's father, LC, said he was proud his son had made it so far. He's been nervous. I'm happy he did as well as he did. Although the competition took center stage, video game makers strutted new games in, other, in another area. And one of them, two teens, Jeffrey Noble, 13 of Columbia, you know, I think I know that kid, of Columbia and Brian Kimball of Hamilton, Ohio, fought it out in a gun battle. They played Lethal Enforcers, wow, which will be out in October for about 55 bucks. <laughs> the youth didn't seem to mind all the violence and bloodshed. Okay. It's not bad for you. I turned out okay. I don't know. I'm just saying. It's not bad for you, Noble said. It's just fun killing each other. That's a little grisly. Nearby, Greg Dickens, a Fort Lauderdale mail carrier, watched his 12-year-old son, Jason, play one of the hottest games, Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> The game with a price tag of $70 will be released in late November and the company expects to sell $2 million before Christmas. Yes, in 1994, a video game cost $70 and now people are whining on Steam about games that cost $35 or, you know, come on, AAA titles that people don't even want to pay money for anything these days. It just cracks me up. I remember paying, what, like 80, 90 bucks for virtual racing because it was like this special cartridge with a chip mounted on top it looked like i don't know some kind of sega cd gone wrong i don't know what the heck it was sega cd 32x i think you yeah it was a uh, something else very unusual we didn't really see that a lot outside of what the sega folks were trying on the genesis you saw all these different can Frankenstein video game contraptions snapping together. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever seen that, but you could get a, a Genesis Sega CD 32X. I think you could get it like a Game Genie. And then, uh, no, I don't think it had a Game Genie yet. But I know they had like Sonic and Knuckles and like another Sonic game that connected together. It was crazy, man. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. But I don't know, can't blink. A for effort, I guess. They were, they were trying something innovative and different. So, um, so I the reason I wanted to go through these articles is who knows, these articles could disappear from the internet and then there's like no record of anything. Uh, once again, there's that. I think we've covered that pretty well. This is the tournament in 1995 that happened. So this, as you can see, it says part two here, right behind my head. And... Uh, Looks like some Illuminati symbol. They got like a triangle. Illuminati confirmed. I got the eye at the top. The sun coming up. Just like the Russian, you know, communism symbol. Soviet symbol. And then it says, it's time again. Time for players all over the world. Square off and do or die. No nonsense video game competition. If you're up to the challenge, get down to Blockbuster Video. And sign up from May 25th to the t June 25th. You'll win a prize just for participating participation trophies nice it's free it's open to everyone and from then on it's up to you that's cool you know i didn't participate in this one and i don't even know why maybe i didn't like the games or i don't know maybe i was like maybe i had gamer fatigue i don't know maybe i was just salty that i didn't win i don't know but anyway here's the one that i participated in the official blockbuster video 1994 video game championship I'm kind of blocking that there and this is so cool um because this is the one i actually participated in and it's just amazing to see this limber up your thumbs game masters it's time to sign up for the blockbuster video 
1994 World Game Championship, a worldwide video game competition. Read up on the rules, study the game tips on the following page, then practice, 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 and send your scores to, into the stratosphere. So this is an interesting detail. It says that who, anyone 20 years or younger, is eligible to enter the contest. As you can see, I don't know what the reason for this is, if it was a marketing thing or something, but clearly this was a child's um, hobby at this time. You know, I'm not, you can't, I can't even imagine them putting some kind of limitation on a contest like that these days. I don't know. So maybe it was just a concern about kids being around adults, I suppose. I could, I could kind of get that because they kind of grouped you together in teams once you got to Fort Lauderdale. So I, don't know, I guess maybe parents may have not have been comfortable with that. Why 20? I don't know. So then, uh, when register for the championship at your local participating blockbuster video store between the 16th and the 15th in 1994. Totally remember this clear as day, man. The store competition will be held from the 15th to July 10th. World Game Championship Finals will be held August 19th. So, you know, you got about store competition starts around mid-June and then the world happens in mid-August. So, uh, you know, that's moving pretty quick. They're, they're moving that competition along pretty quickly. And I figure, you know, that must have happened. The regional must have been around mid, late July, I, I figure. I don't know the exact date. But I can say for a fact that my regional was held at Faneuil Hall in Boston, right in downtown Boston. That was crazy. One of the coolest moments of my life, truly. I'll talk about more about that a little bit later. Uh, it says where the store championships will take place at your local participating Blockbuster store. Blockbuster video will fly the top game players from each state to the World Game Championships final in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Winning simple. Score the most points during the time allotted in three different games. The rest of this guide is everything you need to make that happen. The store champion will be the competitor with the best cumulative point score based on the tournament scoring system. Okay. And then it talks about, you know, what the what the games are on the next page, I assume. So that's the symbol, the, you know, this is the first 1994. That was the icon they came up with. So the, they didn't really change too much about the logo. You got this. And then you got that. They really just put a two on their world video game. You know, it's just pretty similar. What's the difference? World game. One says world video game. One has the year at the top, the other doesn't. I guess they started going with Roman numerals. Make it feel more official. Uh, so this guy is Mark Gwinnie. And this is the winner of the Super Nintendo Championship. I found this guy. I was wondering, because I do remember this guy. I just rem remember only catching like a glimpse of him. Because I did see... I didn't. I don't think I saw him at the tournament. But you know when, where I did see these jokers, I saw them at on the today show i believe it was or no actually i think it was good morning america i remember it must have been late august or something like that at my grandma's house and i remember seeing these guys you know i was excited to see that i wanted to see oh they'd go on the big bad official news show and uh, you know the show that my grandma watches every morning so how cool is that right and uh i remember this guy mark guanane went on there and I think he was kind of a lanky kid when he was younger. He was younger. He was 14. And it says right here, you know, I hope I'm not blocking, but it says, you know, 1994 Blockbuster Video Game Championship. Second place in Sega's Rock the Rock. Okay. Not sure what that is. Some other competition. It looks like he wrote a book as well. So that's pretty cool. Looks like he's into sci-fi. And uh, this guy right here, he, I'm in uh, Maryland myself. So he's around here too. He must be uh, no no further than I don't know half an hour from me. This guy lives around. He's a basically an entrepreneur now. Looks like he's into uh, Java programming, and uh, I believe he makes websites. He says full stack, so he does front end and back end. So he's either making standalone Java applications or he's doing web development, something like that. Uh, I actually messaged this guy on Facebook and confirmed that it's him. So that's pretty cool. And I actually got him in contact with Mark Gwinnane as well. So that's kind of interesting. He said he was kind of looking for him. He's like, where is that guy? So this is the guy that won the Genesis competition. 
and actually there's an article in the Baltimore Africa Afro-American looks like some kind of paper some uh, regional paper that covers Afro-American events and uh, it's just a kind of cool article I haven't read this whole thing but it's pretty detailed it's quite a lot it talks all about how you know how Fred began playing video games when he was four often spends hours in front of the television here he plays a game on his Sega Genesis called Aladdin. I remember that game. I had Aladdin. That was actually a pretty tight game. Uh, same people that made Cool Spot. That was a good game too. I mean, I think they made something else too. They're, they, they were really known for just having like amazing animation in the 16-bit era. I remember that game very clearly. Good music too. Yeah, that's gonna look, this actually looks like a really detailed cool article. I'm not going to read all of that though. It's just kind of showing the picture this is probably like when he actually won up on I don't know if this was actually this looks like it was actually at the event I assume uh, so here's another cool article I'll kind of go over again this is on the 24th so this is actually also just like shortly right after that actually is this this actually looks like really similar to the other article that I kind of went over, so I won't go in depth over it like that. Uh, it's funny when you like kind of look at these media articles, you notice they pretty much copy paste each other and they're super lazy. <laughs> they rarely just like put a lot of work into these articles, especially something about a video game tournament because they're just lazy journalists who don't, don't do their jobs most of the time. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't see anything a whole lot being, I don't see a lot of new information here being revealed. He says he's nervous, he was shaking like a leaf. You know, that's pretty normal, man. You're trying to win the world championship, you're going to feel some jitters, absolutely. Um, he said he looked calm, but he hit it. So, yeah, so actually that's about it. Um, in terms of the stuff I found on the internet, I found a cool picture that kind of shows the thing that they mail to you. I don't clearly remember this, but I kind of do. Like you had a team leader that was kind of like coordinating everyone and keeping everyone, making sure kids aren't getting lost and kidnapped and all that kind of, you know, want some kind of PR nightmare for blockbuster video. Your practice sessions are at 945, 1215, 315. You had a practice session. You had team numbers, player numbers. Continue. You were a contestant. And your game. Oh, man. You had your game play time. Oh, crap. So it looks like you had a practice and then a game play time, which I barely remember, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's a little nerve wracking because you can imagine you would be like, oh, man, that's my time. It's my time. I better. This is it. Time to perform. The lights are on. So here it says, uh, congratulations. Here's this is what this is. So this is like what they mail to you, I believe. Oh, uh, I think this is, yeah. If you win the state or regional competition, I always say I'm a state champion, which is kind of true. I'm a regional champion. I don't know. The people don't understand what the heck that means. So I just say state. Um, regional could be like, I don't know, from here to the next town over. So it was kind of like state. So I was like in Massachusetts, it was probably like three different regions or something like that to make it reasonable to, for people to drive to. Like I was in Boston, maybe there was one in Springfield in Western Mass. Maybe there was one on Cape Cod. I don't know. Maybe they broke it out. I don't know how they broke it out, like I said. So let me just kind of show you this cool letter. I'm sure I received one of these. So it says July 18th, which is an interesting thing. That's nice to have a time, st uh, a date stamp on here. So congratulations, made it to the Blockbuster Video 1994 World Game Championship Finals, the largest and most exciting video game competition in history. You'll be competing on the latest games in the first and be the first to go head to head on never before seen games months before the rest of the world. And have a great weekend planned with lots of surprises and you'll get to meet top level players from across the globe who are power players just like you. Oh man, I'm a power player, according to Blockbuster Video. The big weekend is August 19th to the 21st, 1994. Place is Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention Center. And now that you've proven your video, your video skills, in your hometown, it's time to do some serious practicing for the finals. These are some of the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo games you'll be playing. So I guess they just kind of tell you what games you're going to play. 
Um, so that's it, guys. Um, in terms of stuff I've found on the internet. Um, additionally, I'm just going to tell you my personal experience. So, the, the store competition, right? These three games. Virtual Racing, NBA Jam, and Sonic 3. I just so happen to own all three of these games. Um, big time Genesis guy. Loved my Sega. I loved them because uh, the sports games were good. I was I liked sports games at that time. I enjoyed uh, Madden 93. And uh, the sports games were probably a weakness on the Super Nintendo. And, you know, the... I found that the Genesis games generally were a little more, I don't know if faster, I mean, you know, everyone kind of has that general opinion and it was kind of true in a lot of ways. Genesis you know, didn't have, had blast processing, right? This fake marketing term they made up, but in a sense it was kind of true. Uh, the games just did have a little more speed. The sound was terrible, so terrible that to this day, it's hard to go back and enjoy some of those games just because the sound was so bad. In fact, I think almost the Nintendo kind of had better sound in some ways. But uh, but they played very well. They're you know so you know anything that required a lot of moving things on the screen or like a lot of high speed. I feel like the Genesis just did it better. Plus, another thing was that Nintendo was super duper squeaky clean, family friendly, and they wouldn't allow like any kind of like Mortal Kombat was the big controversy, right? Like, so, you know, you didn't want Johnny straight up ripping some guy's head off in, in Mortal Kombat. I mean, that's pretty, pretty grotesque for like a little kid to be messing around with stuff like that. Um, so of course I was a teenager and I definitely wanted that in my game. I was like, man, that's the real deal. You know, you know, games, we're starting to put more violent content inside of them. And Sega had a lot of games at Splatterhouse. It had um, some weird football game where guys were getting, I don't know, if, what was it? It was the coach of the Atlanta Falcons had some Jerry Glanville football or something like that. It was some bloody violent game. And then uh, Immortal, I think, was another one where you could like explode people or I don't know I never got into that game but I just remember that game where you could had some pretty grotesque violence in it so um Sega was more willing to take that risk and kind of put more of the violent content in there and uh, I mean there were court hearings on this and everything like they were trying to pin things on the video game industry I forget what it was but that Joker from Connecticut what's his name uh, some congressman from Connecticut. He recently, he's a big name. I can't remember his name right now. And uh, he was basically trying to get them in all kinds of trouble for video games, causing some kind of problems. And it's like, uh, anyway, I mean, I, 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 with some things, I'm pretty strict with my kids, but violence, as long as they have a clear understanding of reality and what's not real, it doesn't bother me too much. I mean, I think, I think, I think sometimes reality is a little too sanitized these days. I mean, think about old times when people were just like living through like this, you know, just terrible wars and hard conditions. I mean, kids in the, in the past had it a lot harder, <laughs> I'm sure in a lot of ways, went through a lot more actual hardship instead of these simulated things. But anyway, that's my opinion. So anyway, so, um, uh, yeah, so. I was very good at NBA Jam. I mean, I wasn't like world renowned. I mean, I was I was good enough that I was a lot better than the average kid. I played a lot of NBA Jam. I was very good at Sonic. I played Sonic one, two, and three. And I, I you know I, I played them all quite a bit, so I was very familiar with those games. And then Virtual Racing. I mean, I was pretty into the racing games too because I played. Let's see, what was there before Virtual Racing? What kind of race? I mean, there was what? Road Rash 2? I mean, there wasn't... I mean, on Super Nintendo, Mario Kart, of course. But what was on Genesis? I can't even think what racing games were even on the Genesis. It was... But anyway, I did have virtual racing and I was quite good at that game. In fact, my dad and I used to play that game 
and we would beat each other's times. My dad was cool enough. He he wouldn't play any video game, but he would play racing games. He loved racing games. He he loved sports cars. He was a car nut. And he would play virtual racing with me. He went later. He would play Daytona USA when I got a Sega Saturn. And he played Need for Speed with me. He loved Need for Speed, too. So all three of those games, we would race each other's and beat, we'd take turns and see if we can beat each other's best time. So that was a lot of fun doing that with him. And so I was great at all three. So this, you know, the stars kind of lined up for me here. I'm like, yes, these, I'm awesome at all three of the, these games. So, you know, my mom is the one that took me to the store. I couldn't drive yet. I was 15. So I go down there with my, I'm a kind of a doofy teenager. You know, I got my, my Patrick Ewing basketball shoes on. I got my, my jean shorts. I'm looking real good. I got my uh, probably a Marvin the Martian t-shirt on, you know, this is the mid 90s. So uh, that was like the coolest thing going. And uh, so I went down there, loaded this game, loaded these games up and all three of them. I when I was at the store competition, I absolutely smoked it for sure. And I know that because the guy that was sitting there watching me play, he was like, whoa because he knew what like a, a good score was like a because he had all the other scores and he was like i i don't remember exactly what my score was or whatever but i mean an nba jam i know I, I lit up the scoreboard i put up a ton of points no idea you only play a half and i believe it was a half at the store it would take too long to do a full game and i think they just took whatever your points were or whatever and i killed nba jam Sonic 3, I mean, I just remember getting, like, I think I did, like, multiple of those crystal things, and you get, like, a ton of points from those, and then I'm pretty sure I got the top time in the virtual racing, so it was, it was a lock, it was very, it was a breeze at the store level, and so sure enough, I get notified not too long, you know, after that, you know, there was a period of time that they were having people try to see who was number one at the store level, and I came out on top, number one, awesome, very cool. I almost expected it, maybe, just because of his reactions. So I guess I would have been really disappointed if I didn't win. Um, so we find out that I have to go to downtown Boston to play at Faneuil Hall. So my parents are going to have to take time to drive me down there. And actually, my dad went this time. So I think even, yeah, I think, I think I'm, my sisters had to have been there too. So it was my mom, dad, and I'm pretty sure my sisters, unless they went somewhere. I don't really remember my sisters being there though. I'll have to ask them about that. Anyway, so my family is there. We drive into Boston. You know, I'm in, at the time, living in Leominster, Massachusetts. It's kind of like central mass, central upstate Massachusetts. And... We're driving into Boston, you know, the big city. Ooh, very scary, intimidating. All these big buildings. I'm, a, you know, as a 15 year old, and you know, we, we park our car, and I remember getting out. We walk in there, and I'm not used to the city, so it's a little different to me. I'm more like, you know, I live in like a colonial in the suburbs, pretty much. So it's a little different to me just to be in the city, and I get there and. I remember there being like a big tent set up in a square in in front of Faneuil Hall. And I remember I was kind of amazed that a radio station was there. I don't know if, what, if they were covering the event or if they were just promoting things. But I do remember a radio station being there. I don't remember how many, if it was one or two, but a radio station was there. And... I find, I find, I don't remember when I found out, but I found out it was a 64 man competition, a single elimination. So you would have to go eight and oh in order to win. So, so we start playing, play the first guy and I win the first game. So great. I win the first game one and oh, awesome. Remember, I remember winning pretty handily. It wasn't, I wasn't really close. There were only a couple games I remember being really close. Um, the second guy I played, I don't know who that guy was, but
but he was damn good. And he could have easily eliminated me right there. But somehow I ended up beating him. I remember him being a tough player. I don't remember the score. But um, I remember what I do remember is he had real, a really nice family, actually, is what I will, what I do remember the most clearly. Because I remember his parents uh, coming up to me and they were like congratulating me and they were so, so nice about it. And there's like, wow, you, you're such a, uh, you, you played so well. You, you did a great, he, my son said you did a great job. I was, and, you know, that's really cool thinking back about that, how nice they were. So that's really cool of them. And the rest of the way, I think I may have even skipped around. I'm not sure if like some players just didn't show or what, but and that may have happened one time. So I don't know if I went eight, no, or seven, no, but anyway, so I kept, I advanced, you know, went three and oh, four and oh, five and oh, six and oh, and even seven and oh, I don't remember those last few player players to be like exceptionally tough. I, I remember I beat them pretty comfortably. I, like I wasn't sweating bullets necessarily. I, I remember winning pretty comfortably. But the last game was definitely, definitely a tight one. And I remember it so clearly, even today, 23 years later. Um, I even remember the final score. It was, well, it was, let me tell the story. So we only play a half, right? And I picked the Knicks. That's my team. I was playing the New York Knicks the whole way. You know, a lot of my family's from upstate New York around Syracuse. So I would always play the, I would always pick the New York team. So I'd pick the Giants and Madden. I would pick the Knicks in basketball. And so I had Patrick Ewing and, and, uh, what was his name? Oakley, Charles Oakley. And, uh, so they were a good, dunking team that you know they were big guys in the paint they could block shots they were pretty good pretty strong team but i don't I honestly from a power gaming standpoint i don't actually think they were one of the best teams to be honest i, I was never get deep into the game theory but in, in nba jam i was more just kind of like good at juking people out running around hitting three pointers getting you know, make your, you have, if you score three times in a row, you're on fire, then you're just like draining them and then you can like blow people out. So, and I would, you know, shove people down. I was just good at like that twitchy gameplay and knocking people down, getting steel. I was pretty good at that. And so I was playing this guy. I cannot remember the team he picked. I don't know if it was. Maybe the heat or something like that. I really can't remember. I wish I did remember, but yeah, I can't remember. Maybe it was Charlotte. I almost want to say Charlotte, perhaps, because Charlotte was a pretty hot team at that time. And Larry Johnson and someone else. And um, Morning, is that his name? So I remember I went up at the end of the second quarter. I finally dunked it. I mean, these, it was a tough defensive match. It was not like, a, we were not like lighting up the scoreboard or anything like that. It was actually a tough defensive match. And it was uh, tough to score. Cause it's like every time you went in the paint, the guy is knocking you down. Um, so it was like difficult to give, to find a way to score. It's just like, bam, you're getting, your shots getting blocked. Oh, you, you're dunking from this way. Bam. He, he knocked it out of your hand perfectly. So, but I was doing the same to him too. So it was a struggle for either of us to get the points. You, you basically had to go in and just hope that your, your dunk didn't get blocked. Cause there were a lot of, there was a lot of dunking going on and um, a couple of jump shots as well. So I managed to, it's 13 to 14. I'm losing and I managed, I put up a shot. I hit it. 15 to 14, I'm up. And there's like, man, I don't know, like 10 seconds left. The guy takes it, runs down the court. He's trying to get a clear shot. I'm in his face, just like swatting the ball, ball lighting up, like about to fly out of his hand. I'm all over him. And he runs to the bottom 
left. Instead of going for the paint, it looks like he's trying to line up for a jump shot from the side. And he jumps up and there's like one second left. Releases it, hits the rim, rattles around, time expires, hops right out. Unbelievable, dude. Dude, I will never forget that moment. That meant that I won the game and I was going to Florida and I just lost it. Like, I was actually crying <laughs> because not because it's sad right but because it was just an amazing adrenaline pumping moment where you're playing a very talented player in a, in a very competitive game and your adrenaline is just going through the roof and now you've won and that also means you're getting this amazing reward of, of a, you know you're basically getting a paid vacation to Fort Lauderdale to compete in this basically a once in a lifetime event. And, um, that was amazing. I remember hugging my mom and just being blown away. And I, do I remember anything else? It's just like, I just remember hugging my mom and getting some stuff and then we kind of head out of there. I just, that was a really cool moment because it was really, a cool format single elimination no scoring system or any of that so you know when you're doing single elimination tournament style it's a it's very dramatic because it's it's do or die and if you're you know when that clock runs out and you're you're losing by one that's it you know it's not like let's tabulate the points no it's there's the buzzer you're going home but in my case i heard the buzzer I'm winning by one and the shot just rattled out of the, of the basket. It, very, it, it was crazy. It was definitely a cool moment. Very dramatic. And everyone was watching like, whoa, that was, I mean, there was a pretty good crowd standing around. I don't know who these people were. If they were just like random bystanders, just kind of like watching. It wasn't like, it was just like, two nerds at a TV just like and no one was paying attention no there were like a lot of people there like there was a big crowd like huddled around I don't remember how big I was, I was in the zone of course but there were a lot of people there uh, I just remember certain people in the crowd saying things like oh man I like this kid right here like some like some people in the crowd were like polling for me I was like really what <laughs> and I wasn't really like a huge super athlete I played I played a little bit of sports but I wasn't like a huge athlete and I wasn't really used to that where people were like polling for you. Cause I think there's this one guy in the crowd who was like, he saw me play the guy in round two and he was like, Oh, this is the guy that's going to win the whole thing. I can tell. And, uh, so it, that was really cool to see certain people that were actually just polling for me and were, and were hoping that I would win. And that was, so it was a cool feeling to actually follow through on that and, and be able to enjoy that moment. So that was really cool. So of course, then that takes me forward to the world championship, the night as we see right here in the background, the 1994 world game blockbuster video game championship. So there were a lot of games and you know, none of these articles really mention what games they are. I don't even know for sure, um, which game it was and I, not, I mean, I know, I know a lot of them. I just can't remember every single one. Like, I remember Jungle Book was one of them. Uh, I honestly barely remember what all those games were. Maybe maybe Sonic 3 was in there again. It was a lot of random games. I remember clearly Jungle Book just because I just royally screwed up on that game. I remember renting it and doing my best... <laughs> Uh, I just wasn't really that into that game, I suppose, but to this day, I regret not, not digging a little deeper on that game because I know that I messed up when I went to the world championships on that game and I was like, was not getting a great score. And I saw some other guy slaying it on you know, some younger kid. He was totally slaying it from some kid from Connecticut. He was like 10 or something. And that kid was just killing it. And, um, uh, I was like, oh man, see, I didn't dig that deep. I should have played more, should have really, you know, re been reading. See, I didn't have internet at that time. So it's like, whatever you just sit down and figure out, that's it. That's all you, that's all you know. So you either know the game or you don't. 
And uh, so that that game, I, particularly, I remember that not being a good thing. I think Mortal Kombat, no, Mortal Kombat, no way. that They wouldn't have included that. That was not in the tournament. But I actually cannot remember the, the games in the tournament, so that's kind of bugging me. Um, does this say anything about the games? Uh, yeah, all expense paid trip for himself. Yeah. Let's see. Does it mention what games? Uh, NBA Jam it says NBA Jam was one of them. Highest average when they totaled up all the scores. Yeah, I don't see any. I kind of wish that I could remember every single game that was in there. But it was kind of random. I can tell you that much. It was just kind of like this hodgepodge of games. In a way, I didn't really like that. I kind of liked it like a tighter focus. But that was like a little bit all, a little bit all over the place. And that's probably part of their marketing, perhaps, and the promotion. Because, you know, hey, play this game. Play that game. Um, it says here, his reviews will appear in a future issue of the publication. Which and was digitalized into Super Strike, a game developed by Electronic Arts. Is that that helicopter game? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Editor for a day at GamePro. That's funny. This article looks pretty sweet, actually. This guy's practiced seven to nine hours a day. Yeah, that's why this guy won. So that's cool. Um. Yeah, I don't see any more details in there. Anyway. Let's go, oops. Here we go. Using my web browser here. So, so yeah, my mom basically was super excited, not only because I won, but also because that meant she was going to Florida with me. <laughs> so she was getting a, an all expense, well, most expense paid trip to Florida and she got to bring her sister with her. So that was a lot of fun for us. Uh, I went down there and, uh, I remember we were at some kind of like, we also went to Disney while we were down there. We did, I guess it made a lot of sense to do that too. I think we did that after, so it was really hot, you know, late, mid, late August. And, um, the three day tournament, I think we had a hotel or something like that. I can't clearly remember, but I just remember that it was really cool meeting. So you had everyone broken out into teams and the teams I think you had like eight six to eight kids on a team and that was probably like the average age like 15 and a lot of these kids were um, anywhere from like I don't know nine eight or nine to uh, like 19 20 you know pretty much the age range that the tournament said that people could be uh, I remember one kid I saw okay our team was called Dark Lightning on Sega Genesis. And uh, we actually ended up winning the team award. They had a team award. So basically they had a they would take the scores from all the teams and they would add them up and say, oh, you're the team winner because your team did the best because based on whatever score algorithm they had, they would add it up, which was uh, really cool. And I was sending my mom emails saying, mom, where is that trophy? Where's the Dark Lightning team trophy from Florida? And I could not find it. And I was like really salty about that. I was really hoping she could find that. But I don't know where that thing is. It's probably in my garage or someone's garage. Or maybe just in a trash can. I don't know. No one wants to admit they threw it away. <laughs> so basically it was a glass tro like glass or plastic trophy. I don't know what they make them out of. And it's just like kind of like a um, trapezoid or whatever. One of these deals. And uh, basically, you, just, you know, it had the logo on it and it said Dark Lightning Team Award. And uh, we did win that. So I got, we did win the team. So I'm technically a world champion, right? Because I was on the, the team world champion, um, Dark Lightning. I think I actually named them. That sounds like, like a, um, <laughs> it sounds like a, a, a hacker alias or something you would use on IRC or something like that when you're 15 years old. Cause that sounds really ominous and spooky. And, uh, 
So I remember a couple of kids, really only like three that I really clearly remember. One was a younger kid. I think he was like from a Christian family. And I think they were like, his parents were always like kind of buzzing around him. I remember both of his parents being there. And I think, you know, they're probably concerned about, you know, uh, making sure they're, cause he was younger. So they're more concerned about him like running around Florida, with all these strange uh, you know, environments, the, you know, he's a young kid. So, but he was really good. I remember him being good. He was like 10 or something like that. His name is maybe, I don't know if it was Danny or I, I can't remember. I didn't really talk to him a lot, but I did remember, um, two guys. One was Sebastian. I think he was from New Mexico. And he had longer hair. The guy with longer hair kind of looked like a D&D &D nerd or something like that. And he had glasses, kind of pale. A really nice guy, though. Really nice. And very, he, he was kind of like the older kid that was kind of like keeping us in line a little bit in a good way. In terms of like acting right and not acting foolish in front of like, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're at this blockbuster video tournament. You don't want these younger kids acting foolish and, you know, doing fart jokes and stuff while there's something serious is going on. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're when you're getting your trophy, I remember him saying like, Hey, you, you guys, you know, don't, don't, act, you know, act right when we're up here and, you know, act, you know, kind of professional about it. And, uh, but I thought that was a good thing though, that he kind of, kind of kept us in order a little bit. And, uh, he was a good guy. He was, I just remember him being very gracious and, just a friendly guy and then the only other guy i remember is i don't remember his name he's a black kid from mississippi and he had glasses that's all i remember uh i don't remember his name but he was a he was like from uh, the south so that was like i mean my world was like new york and massachusetts at that time so it was just interesting to meet people from like different parts of the u.s you know, kids from New Mexico and the deep South, you know, I didn't really know a lot about the deep, deep South at the time. You know, it was just like, couldn't my almost a foreign country to me. Um, so it was cool to meet him too. And he was more of a quiet kid. He's kind of like a geeky guy. Of course, a lot of these people, almost everyone was a geek at this thing. And, uh, just a night, he's about 15. I think he's almost the same age as me, 14, 15, 16 around there. And, uh, I guess we all did, we did pretty well, I assume, because we won the team award. So, um, that's what I remember about that. So I think that first, I can't remember if we played them all on the first day. I can't remember the exact schedule. One cool thing I do remember though, I remember on one night they had an official event where they would send us out to like, it was almost like a Dave and Buster's kind of place, like a Chuck E. Cheese on steroids. And they send us to some place down there. And, uh, and that was just super fun. So much fun. And, um, I mean, when I was 15 and back in those days, I, there wasn't a lot of stuff. I feel like that stuff's everywhere now, but back in those days, I don't feel like there was a lot of, I don't know, or at least I didn't have access to it. So it was really cool to be, be able to go to like a really, it was like a high end arcade that had all the most awesome stuff. I mean, it had uh, the, the hottest arcade games at that time. I think street fighting games, I think, were pretty hot at that time, like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and all these other different other games, too. They're, they're said, they had some pretty awesome stuff. I remember there was some spaceship game. I can't remember what the heck it was. But um, that was a really cool experience, too. I just remember really enjoying, like, every moment. They, I'm sure they had a few speeches and stuff like that. I don't remember a lot about it. Um, I just know that I really enjoyed it. It was a really good experience and I had a great time. And I do remember when I was leaving, it was like almost traumatizing. <laughs> it sounds stupid saying now, but it was so much fun. And it was almost like a dreamland that I was, I was, I was like crying, not just crying a little bit. I was like crying my eyes out that I was leaving this place because it was just so much fun. And, um, 
I was like almost uncontrollably crying because those kids, I was never going to see those kids either. And I felt like I connected with them so well. And in high school, it was kind of a rough time for me. Like I didn't, because I was an army brat. Um, so I really came from army culture where things are really just a lot different in army culture compared to like some general civilian population in Massachusetts. It's just, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, um, military culture is just different in general. Plus you're just kind of like got a lot of different kinds of people in the army because you're from all over the nation. So, um, I was more used to a very diverse environment as, as a young kid. Like, you know, when I was nine, 10, 11, 12, that's what I grew up with. It was, it was very diverse, not just racially, but just like everything really. We're all Americans and we're all, they're all, you know, kids of, uh, people who were in the army. So we had that common bond, but also, you know, it, that stuff, you know, all the race and all that stuff. And it didn't really matter. And I don't remember it ever being an issue. And, uh, but when I got out in the civilian life, it just like, was like tough for me adapting to that. Cause it was very different. Yep. I'm not saying it was like, I don't know. It was just tough. Civilian life is just, uh, even if you subtract all of the, um, I don't know if it was necessarily a racial thing or just a culture thing. Um, I think it's probably a bit of both, but it's just uh, very strange to adapt to that, especially when you're going, I, you know, I got up, my father got out of the military when he, when he was, uh, when I was going into ninth grade. So I went into a new high school and had that culture shock from army brat to civilian life. So it was very, very different. And I had a hard time adapting to that. It took me a while to adapt to that, but I guess that's just part of growing up and adapting to different kinds of environments. That's just how it was. And, uh, so I didn't really want to go back to that after experiencing such a fun time with all these kindred spirits who were all gamers and they were just such nice guys and we're having the time of our lives. I felt like it was almost like, uh, Pinocchio when they go to that island and they're just having like the time of their life it wasn't like a sinful thing or whatever but it was just like you were having so much fun and uh so that was a lot that was tough I remember being s super duper sad about leaving that so that is definitely one thing I remember and you know I, here's another detail that I almost forgot you know how when you were like a kid right and you would hear about e3 or events like that or you know these convention centers or have these events where you can go and check out all these games that are coming out in the future they had that at that convention center so that was kind of like what was going on they basically held this tournament in a convention center that was at Broward County whatever convention center and they had all of that stuff it was basically like what we would experience at PAX now they had that going on in 1994 um and that's you know that's what i experienced as a 15 year old uh, a 15 year old before the video game culture ever blossomed so that was just overwhelmingly cool to experience i mean that's the kind of thing you, a, a kid's really only going to read about you know in his video game magazine or, or something like that i mean you're not gonna nor, nor, most kids aren't going to be able to experience something like that. And, uh, so that was just an amazing thing to go through and experience that. I got to see all these games that weren't even necessarily out yet. I think Mortal Kombat 2 was one of them or was that already out? I can't remember. They had the mix of games, like mix of games that were already out that were still promoting. And then, um, some games that were coming out in the future and they even had some booth babes. I think, I don't think it was real. <laughs> I think it was PG 13 maybe, but PG, I think it was like PG. They knew kids were going to be there, but, uh, they, I specifically remember Mortal Kombat 2 being there. That was the big one for me because I was like, oh man, I love Mortal Kombat. In fact, I liked Mortal Kombat more than I liked Street Fighter because I was a Genesis guy. Um, is that reason why? Well, I think Street Fighter was out first. 
and and street fighter didn't come to like way later to genesis so i got into mortal kombat first that was the reason i was a mortal kombat guy but really i later on i realized oh street fighter is a much more technically interesting and strategic game so i did end up liking street for street fighter more in the long run but at, the, at that time i was a mortal kombat 2 guy um i love that game mortal kombat 2 was a good game probably possibly the best one in the series was it three and four i mean they were they were all to be honest they were okay games it was more about the spectacle more than anything i think one had the coolest environment i would say in terms of it feeling like blood sport the movie as a video game it had that like creepy kind of like whoa is this i'm like really at this illegal fighting tournament or something like that that, that was that was one of the cool things about mortal kombat so anyhow what else did i see at this tournament so basically i just remember seeing a whole mess of games um and just playing all kinds of things we would get food i mean as you can imagine that was just like the most amazing experience for a 15 year old um so it was a blast and uh, i think well let me say I, how it ended up as well i should kind of go into that i after my results came in you know sorry i'm kind of all over the place i'm not working off a script here i'm just kind of shooting from the hip whatever i remember and i remember looking on that they had these screens that showed all the scores and i remember when the tournament was all over i remember seeing i came in 28th overall and i was a little bummed about that but to be honest i think that was a pretty good score i can't be too salty about that that's a good score 28th in the world i mean that's pretty good um that's braggable you know that got me that got me some chicks for a while didn't give me any chicks so uh that was that was that i'm thinking is there anything else i should mention about that tournament i think when they were doing like the final championship i do remember that the game that they unveiled i think it was madden some version of Madden 95 or something, which I thought was a little different, weird, because making kids compete on a new game. I think they did something like that. It was weird. So I don't know about, I don't know if it was the best run tournament or whatever, but they did a good, good job. Everyone had a good time. Maybe it wasn't, didn't agree with every decision they made, but it was an, it was an amazing event. And uh, I haven't really seen anything like it since. So that's a shame and uh so that's it guys that's all i can really remember maybe uh some folks will come along and watch this video and maybe it'll jostle their memories a little bit and i would love to see comments or uh feedback or anything that you know about this event maybe i'll even do a follow-up video if i think it merits some follow-up information or anything like that so that's it guys uh i hope this was interesting to you and that uh you enjoyed the video i hope uh the story made some sense i know it's kind of all over the place but i just wanted to uh document it a little bit and get it out there because there's nothing about this there is nothing about this game this uh tournament on the internet so i guess i'll be the guy to publish a video about it i'm like probably the only guy as of this time i looked on youtube i mean there's nothing there's just like old video news reports news reports about it that barely you know they barely know what they're talking about um so that's it guys uh, leave some feedback and i'll see you guys next time